And welcome to 10 Things You Didn't Know About Evil Morty. All right, let's get this show on the road. First appearing in close Rick counters of the Rick kind, Evil Morty looks to be an interesting character. Rather than being an evil clone, he's had one of an infinite amount of possible Mortys. He's interesting as he is seemingly still without a Rick and has managed to work his way into real political power, something no Morty has done before. Today, we're going to be looking at Evil Morty's background and uncovering facts that you not have known. Hold on now. Before we get started, subscribe to us. You'll be joining the notification squad and get frequent updates on brand new content. By the way, why not take part in our emoji quiz? Just see if you can guess what movie these emojis represent. The origins of this theme. When President Morty was finally revealed to be Evil Morty, we were never told it verbally. Instead, the show told us via playing Evil Morty's theme for the damaged Coda, the same song that played during his final scene in his debut appearance. However, while you could be fooled, the song was not written for the show. It was actually written for the band and Blonde Redhead and released on their fifth album, Melody of Certain Damaged Lemons, in 2000. The little-known song by the fairly obscure band was written over 14 years before it ever appeared on the show. That's pretty close to Morty's age. From the Ricks and Mortys that believe in the Citadel to the Ricks and Mortys that don't, you're outnumbered. His intelligence. Despite never being outright stated, the show heavily hints at President Morty being evil early on. He is the only Morty in the show who doesn't stammer and the only Morty that seems to show deep intellectual intelligence. These were traits that were only shown in evil Morty. While the other Mortys are nowhere near as dumb as the Ricks would have us believe, they're certainly not intellectual juggernauts. Evil Morty worked his way into power by promising good things and promising to get rid of the divide between Ricks and Mortys. Now we have to wait and see what he does next. It was a blowout. But hardly call it a blowout. It was almost close enough to trigger a recount. Jesus, what are you, joke security now too? Trump parallels. Don't worry, we're not gonna get political and take sides here. It is true though that Evil Morty was written in some degree as an allegory for Donald Trump. They're both politicians that are polarizing, beloved by some, despised by others who won elections that were so close that they could have warranted a recount. When he's first elected, they make a point of saying that the election was far from a blowout and that he just managed to scrape a win. It wasn't the most subtle writing the show has had, but it was clear political commentary nonetheless. You don't care about me at all. I'm no different than that jack you've got on or, or your stupid portal gun. I'm just a tool. I, I'm just an object. Parallels with our Morty. Of course, Evil Morty is only the second most important Morty in the show. That being said, the two are starting to share a lot of parallels. He stands up for himself far more often, even against other Ricks. It looks like he's, in a way, starting to become more like Evil Morty. It will be interesting to see if the next season of the show features a showdown between our Morty and Evil Morty. They're confident... They've been starting to look more and more like the show is really going to focus more around Morty than Rick. We just hope Evil Morty doesn't say we're not so different, you and I. We've been running the Citadel since before the Council, and you'll find that we're still running it now. He might be a Rick. One popular fan theory is that Evil Morty might actually be a Rick. The basis for this theory is that no other Morty is anywhere near as smart. No other demonstrates the cunning that Evil Morty does, and in fact, the only other character that devious is Rick. Could it be possible that Evil Morty is actually a Rick in disguise? With all of the mad technology that Rick's build, it's definitely not unlikely. And we already know that Evil Morty's Rick was at the very least a cyborg. There is a theory that might back this up. You're really a Rick? Oh, of course I am. Dumb Rick is a Morty. There is only one Rick we know of that is as thick as two short planks. Some fans have theorized that not only was Evil Morty originally a Rick, but that he swapped his brain with his Morty in order to fool them and be able to work on his evil deeds covertly. The only trouble with this theory is that the dumb Rick doesn't seem to recognize Jerry as his father. That being said, with all the technology Ricks make, maybe he's had his memory wiped. His actor isn't credited. In a 
risky and commonly missed joke, despite Justin Roiland being the only actor to play a character in the Rick Lantis mix-up, playing Rick, Morty, and all of their evil and non-evil variants, the only actor to actually be credited in the episode was Jeff B. Davis. Jeff provided a brief voiceover for the in-episode commercial, but aside from that, wasn't in the episode. Despite this, he is the only actor credited, and Justin B. Roiland isn't at all. It's a small little joke, but a fairly funny one, nonetheless. Is that enough off the top? Uh, no. Is it? Yes, yes, I, God I damn, yes. Great. Good. He has taken full control of the Citadel. When the Ricks on the Citadel Council say that they're the ones who really run the show at the Citadel, Evil Morty isn't too happy. As a result, he kills all of those who will oppose his power. It's not exactly a secret, but we are more interested in what this means later in the series. While that part about Morty's control was obvious, this means that in future episodes, the entire Citadel could potentially become either an enemy or a state that our Rick and Morty need to liberate. As for which one it ends up being, we don't know quite yet, but we can't wait to find out. What's your original reality and where's your Rick? Gosh, we moved around so much it's hard to remember. He might be Rick's original Morty. While Rick and Morty has numerous fan theories regarding the origins of its main characters, they nearly all agree that the Morty we follow throughout the show is not Rick's original. We also know that the super intelligent evil Morty was remote controlling his Rick and seemingly has no attachment to him. We also know there is a photograph of Rick with baby Morty, which should be impossible, given that Rick was missing throughout Morty's childhood. Could it be that evil Morty is actually Rick's real grandson and that's why he's depressed all of this time? Dan Harnum Himself is not ruling it out. I've seen this technology before. This Rick was being controlled remotely. He controls his own Rick. We mentioned that Evil Morty was remote controlling his Rick. He was able to do that because he actually built and tampered with him. In the commentary track for Close Rick Counters, Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland mentioned that Evil Morty was actually controlling Evil Rick the whole time via remote control, hence his eye patch and wires at the end of the episode. This means that Evil Morty had to convert Evil Rick into a cyborg to be able to control him and his actions. This means we know nothing about Evil Rick's real intentions, and he spent his only episode under the influence of somebody else that's all i've got time for today all right guys that was uh, and how do you think he'll affect the show going forward were there any facts that, that was that we uh, include if so something about evil morty before you go one last 10 thing. things you didn't know about evil morty all right the following, then you later correct. Remember to subscribe